discovering the wonders of our state's natural resources, and exploring the thrill of outdoor adventure. Mississippi Outdoors is a co-production of the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks and Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Welcome to Mississippi Outdoors. I'm Amanda Mills. And I'm Randy Newell. Thanks for joining us. In our first story, we take a look at beaver management around the Magnolia State. Then we head down to the Gulf of Mexico for some speckled trout fishing with Todd Shayu. Let's go. What we're doing out here is been doing beaver control work. We've got a lot of timber that's being flooded in this area. And in Mississippi, there's no telling how many millions of dollars each year is lost to timber damage because of beavers. We're going to take, uh, we'll be using binary explosives and we're going to uh, blow up these beaver dams. We got three below us right here and this being one of the main dams. But we've got uh, three different colonies within this area we're fixing to look at. When I first started in here, this water was about this deep right here. When we come back, it should be dry because we're gonna blow the dams coming back this way. I'm gonna say there was no more than two beavers in this hut right here. It's just a small, the first day I came down, I heard them when they ran out, or when they hit the water, that is. I guess that's a, one of the tricks of the trade. But if you'll notice, I, I, I poked a small hole where I can see up in the den or in the hut. And I can always have the sun to my back. And a lot of times I can ease up there and if there's any sitting in the hut, I can take them out in the hut. But I got a small hole just pushed in there where I can tell, but there was nobody home. This is, a, like I said, a binary explosive called Kennepack. You have to be licensed to use uh, any explosives now. You have to be licensed to use. Uh, a lot of people try to come up with all kind of concoctions, but it's very dangerous and it's very illegal to do it. You have to be licensed through the ATF to use explosives. What I'm doing, I'm GPS in every dam that we blow, just for record keeping That way, normally when another colony of beavers move in, they're gonna come back to the same spot. They're pretty good engineers. They know the best place to build a dam. There's no more trappers to, I say no more trappers than what it is because of the fur trade. When the fur industry has pretty much died out, that, that kills the trapping because of the monetary value of the fur. Used to trappers would call wanting to come trap on your place and now, you know, people are having to beg trappers to show up or pay them. And to get somebody to clean them out, that's the hard thing. It's easy to go in and catch a few beavers, but to get down to that last one or two, like here, I know we got one or two left and they may give me some trouble. It may take me a week to catch just that one or two. And that, that's when it gets bad. Only It only takes one to stop up the hole. It should be probably about a minute and 30 seconds from the time I ignite it. We are lit. The footprint associated with the beaver impoundment is significantly larger than just the area that is inundated itself. That's one of the reasons why it's so critical. Landowners have got to implement some type of control program. What we use here on this management area is called a two-part explosive. Um, it is not a Class A explosive until the time when these two components are mixed together. And so there's certain requirements. Once these things become Class A explosives, and, and so it's just one of those 
way of going about doing business. We simply do not mix the things, pre-mix them in any fashion at all. While as a two-part explosive, they're, they're a Class C, a shotgun shell, basically, and can be transported without any major restrictions. This particular dam, what you're looking at, is water inside the stream channel or banks itself is not an issue at all. In fact, it is, it is good fisheries and wildlife habitat. The issue here is, though, on upstream beyond our, where we're going to actually see, um, the banks flatten out, flattens out, and it starts impounding water into the floodplain forest. We are attaching debt cord or detonation cord to each individual stick. Several ways, several approaches people utilize to, to detonate charges. We choose to use or put debt cord on each individual stick. This debt cord is, a, is a, an explosive. When put under compression, it will explode extremely fast. Um, and so each individual, we wire each individual stick. Some people will try to to wire one or two sticks in a charge and then put the others in close proximity. I found that to be unsatisfactory because frequently you'll wind up with sticks that doesn't detonate. And by the way, we typically insert these things with uh, the cord wrapped around the end of it, capped down to keep the debt cord from pulling loose from it. Blowing the dam really doesn't achieve an awful lot because as soon as you blow it, they typically next time it rains, you get some flow, we're gonna dam it right back up again. So without you take the numbers down, decrease those numbers, then you really haven't achieved an awful lot over the long term. This is a blaster, real convenient, easy to use, but you don't have to use it. You can use a simple battery, will work just fine. Fine ho! Fine ho! That's the results of eight sticks of kennel pack. And it's releasing this water, uh, giving some relief to uh, flooded timber that uh, we can't see. But uh, it's been a good shoot. Did you know that the money spent on your hunting and fishing license is an investment? The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks uses money from license sales to enhance hunting and fishing. Like providing public hunting opportunities for wildlife management areas. Advise private landowners on deer and habitat management. Providing public fishing opportunities on state lakes. And operating fish hatcheries for stocking public lakes and streams. So make an investment in the great outdoors. Buy your Mississippi hunting and fishing license today. Hey folks, we're down here at Bayou County. Nice crisp morning. Uh, we got the Bulot brothers here, Richie and Carl. What do you think about it? Category five guys. Hey. These guys came out with a line of baits. We've been smoking some trout on them. So I'm gonna get them on board today and show them, especially this man right here, what this category five suicide croaker will do. Uh, I, I know he's a, he's, a, he's a heck of a trout fisherman. How about you? Absolutely, this is my first time. I. Uh... I'm learning things from my brother. That's why he developed these <laughs> So I'm gonna see if I can hold my own with you professionals, and I'm gonna try my best. We're going after specker trout, which is, you know, that's the usual. That's the one with the spots. That's the little things with the spots. It got a tooth in the front, like kind of look like that. But and after that, we're gonna try and maybe run go get some redfish. All 
I tell you, I really appreciate being involved in such a professional organization as Category 5. I'm excited to fish with you guys. I hear Todd, you're a great fisherman. You know, I'm always working, so I'm really looking forward to this trip. All right, go ahead. Uh, what you using there, guy? Yeah. Suicide croaker, my man. Look at hey. Little school trout. Little school trout. I'd like to point out that the older brother, Richie Buad, actually caught the first fish of the day. Here we go. Here we go. I got it. Oh, yeah, buddy. That's a little male here. You can, you can croak him. We usually start off early here on the males, and then the females will move in. Oh, he's got two on. No, nah, he's got Don't let him on. land two. <laughs> Don't let him land two at a time. Oh, here you go, Mr. Richie. Is this how you do it, Mr. Richie? Boy, this fishing stuff's fun for my first time. Hey, Mr. Category 5, do it a dime. <laughs> Mr. Todd, good job, Mr. Todd. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, good fish, good fish. Not bad. Is that how you do it, Mr. Todd? Oh, yeah. Shy you blue. Uh-oh, folks, it's the third time I reeled in without a fish. That's not good. I'm gonna try and concentrate this time. I'm, I'm, I'm switch baits. Look, I'm not an idiot now. This man's catching him back here on the green. I love my blue, but hey, <laughs> three or four fish, I got to switch. Suicide croakers, folks. Deadly bait. And just don't think that the trout are stacked up in here. But we did a little test the other day that my buddy said, oh, they'll hit anything you throw out there. So he started throwing multiple lures out of his pack. Don't think that. They are stacked up in here and you will catch them, but this little bait is deadly. Oh, look at this pig. Oh, he's got a shake on there, boy. He got a shake on there. I actually have two. I actually have two if they stay on. Oh no, not two at a time. <laughs> you know, that quiet moment we just had, it was a bit of reflecting on my study. Okay. You in that? Oh, yeah. Holy moly. They Whoa. got it. That's what I'm talking about. Look at this. In Richie's spot, sir. I noticed though he casted it way over here. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh -huh. Unbelievable. This would be in Richie's spot. I was fishing a little further north. Richie's side of the boat. Maybe not. Oh, no, pretty fish. Ooh. Nice trout. Nice Ow. trout. Look at that. Look at that tank. That one's bigger. That's a female. There's your sow. The, la the ladies like me. <laughs> Chicks dig me. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, well, y'all come out of a mold. These are running a little small today, but goody, goody. Hang on, hang on, keep your net up, keep your net up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Ran into a little dry spell. We was only catching four at a time there a minute ago. There's only three people fishing, but we got a tandem tank back there. Pull that rabbit out of the hat. Right off the end of that key over there, boys. Straight out in front of where you robbed, we're just pointing. Now it's on the shrimp minnow, man. Shrimp minnow, That's shrimp right, minnow. That's my other bait. That's a stud there. Oh, you're gonna need a net for him. Oh, I got the net. That's a good fish. Just bring him up, bring him up, bring him up, bring him up. Daddy, no hey, Tay. <laughs> Tay. What's he got, a, a three pounder? Hey. What's that, a three pounder? <laughs> Why don't you lay a couple of them little bitty things you've been catching next to this thing? And just so y'all know, folks, I'm actually seven foot two. I mean, it's a uh, hybrid shrimp minnow. 
designed by Captain Kenny Krieger, my business partner. And uh, the way that he actually designed it, he actually he first fished it in uh, some brackish water. He caught a five pound bass. Ooh, look at here, look at here, boy. Shoot him, Todd. If I can land this one, I'm in the race with them Beulah boys. Oh. oh. Go ahead, get him, get him, get him. Hey. Hey, he might not be. I'll bring him in the boat. Oh, but that's a pretty fish, too. Now listen here, boys. That's a 26 inch fish, huh? See, I let these boys, if I bring people out here, you gotta let them get. I think they're doing pretty good. Oh, I think I got you, babe. I don't know, bro. I think I got you. Need a net? I'll let you know in a minute. I'm used to catching these little ones, so y'all don't worry about that. Nice one. Nice. Wow, that one ought to eat shy use. Oh, better. Well, that's a whitey there, buddy. That's a serious white. That's a nice white. Hunters are headed outdoors, and the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks wants to keep these good times from turning into tragedy. When hunting deer or hogs in any gun season, the hunter must wear in full view at least 500 square inches of fluorescent orange. Always control the muzzle of your gun. Don't point it at anything you don't want to shoot. Identify your target and what's beyond it. Enjoy your time in the woods this year. Hunt safe, hunt smart. For over 70 years, Mississippi Outdoors Magazine has served the readers of the Magnolia State. In it contains several interesting features, such as wildlife photography, the lunar table, and even a kid's page. Subscriptions to the magazine are very inexpensive, and when you subscribe, you will receive six bi-monthly issues containing articles on hunting and fishing in the state, public lakes, state parks, and even our wildlife management areas. For more information, call our toll-free number at 1-888-874-5785. And our next story, Amanda, heads to the woods. I go wild turkey hunting in Kemper County. This morning we're going turkey hunting in Kemper County. I'm with Trent Nice. Trent, what can we expect? I don't know, you know, last week we came, we heard seven to eight turkeys, but they weren't in the place we thought they were, so this time we're gonna stop on the hill and maybe get a better idea where they at before we go from there to them. All right, something's coming out, let's go hunting. jumped out of my stomach. I thought that was him. I was about to be so mad. I know. I was about to be so mad. God. But he was one got him. Yeah. How far? Good way. <laughs> and then there was one, one back there here got one. You got to be kidding. No, we're, we've been surrounded. Just, that, 
this goblin back down there where we at a while ago. Coming down that road. Front. I'm having a gun. I'm having. <laughs> Good shot. Good shot, man. Let's go get your turkey. Yes. Let's go get your turkey. Oh my goodness, I'm still shaking. Good. I made a three-year-old turkey. Thank you. Two dozen days. You can't have been in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They didn't even gobble to be right there. Oh, it's perfect. Me and Rusty always wait till the last week of the turkey season to, to get a bird. That's how we roll. <laughs> we couldn't let them get, we had this tree picked out right here. We couldn't let them get further than this or it'd be out of camera angle. The, the, third, the third time that, oh, they're getting close, they're getting close. And I was like, oh, this gun is getting so heavy, you know, getting worn out. <gasps> there they are, I can see them. And Russ is like, just hold on, hold on, I can't see them. And so that's when you just start, you know, your heart starts doing like this and the gun is going. <laughs> well, it's something to see one, one turkey, but to actually see three, I've never, I've never experienced that. So I thought that was really cool. Look at that turkey's been strutting. Beautiful sight when they're all strutting down the road like that. Yeah. Wings wore down where he's been strutting. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. Girl. We make a pretty good team, guys. Maybe next year. <laughs> Maybe. Whew. Oh, sissy girl done it. Woo. A little city girl like me coming out to the country shooting a turkey. Hey, that's all the time we have for this week. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us again next time for more exciting adventures. Until then, I'm Amanda Mills. And I'm Randy Newell. See, See you outdoors. outdoors.